Hey folks, uh, this lesson is Properties of Parallelograms. This is Module 15.6 of our Integrated Math 2 uh, class. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Just make sure you click the Integrated Math 2 link at the top, all right? All right, so properties of parallelograms. So our question here is, uh, what can we conclude about the sides, angles, and diagonals of a parallelogram? Okay, that leads us into some definitions here. The first one is uh, one that you've heard before. Quadrilateral is any polygon that has four sides. So like a, a square has four sides. So that is a quadrilateral. So does a rectangle. So does this uh, parallelogram. Although these are parallelograms also. We'll talk about that in a second. But any four-sided polygon uh, is a quadrilateral. Okay. So parallelograms, you guys, is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. So like these sides are parallel and the top and bottom are parallel. Same with this one. These left and rights are parallel, so are the tops and bottoms. Same with that one right there. So those are parallelograms right there, okay? All right, so here's some properties of parallelograms. The opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Well, that's just our definition right there. And I tell my students that you mark them and and uh, I still get a lot of kids, they don't mark it. If they say it's a parallelogram and you got some parallel sides, mark them so your brain is, is seeing the parallel sides right here. Okay, so these sides are parallel with the two arrows and then these sides are parallel with the one arrows right there. So you got to mark your figure to tell your brain that those are parallel. Otherwise, a lot of kids think that, okay, I can remember that. And then you kind of get going along and it's, it's just telling your brain, it's just signs to show your brain that they're parallel. Okay, both pairs of opposite sides are, are congruent. So you show your yourself uh, that um, uh, with these tick marks right here. So the, the one tick marks here show that these are congruent and these two show that those guys are congruent. Okay. All right. I know you're thinking, well, I know that. And uh, anyway, so both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Okay. So here I showed you with these angle arcs. So these one arcs are congruent and these ones that have two arcs are congruent right there. Okay. And then uh, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay. So bisect, you guys, means in the middle. Okay. In the middle. All right. So here's the diagonals right there. So here's one diagonal bisected. So it went through the midpoint right there. So that side equals that side but both pairs of diagonals are bisected so this side equals this side also right there okay so we show that with the two tick marks okay all right and then consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary so consecutive means the next two angles like a and b are next to each other b and c are next to each other these guys are next to each other these guys are next to each other supplementary means they add up to 180 okay so if i know one of them let's say this one's 60 right there then this one has to be 120 and this one has to be 60 and this one has to be 120 okay they're all their consecutives or supplementary opposites are congruent these would have been both 60s these would have been both 120s okay all right so uh, all right, so here we're going to prove that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, okay? All right, so um, we're going to be given this setup right here. Now, remember, this is section C. You're going to see in the next uh, uh, flip chart here a big proof, okay? And I've already told my students. I showed them this, and I said, I want you to go to your textbook and copy that down, and we'll come back to this tomorrow. So put their homework tonight was to copy that down in, in their notebook right there, okay? So, so, um, so... Uh, let's go ahead and get going here. So, and then there's another one that they had to copy. So they had to copy this one down, and then they had to copy the flowchart proof on another page. I think it was 791. So, anyway, so um, always uh, given information is always my first statement here. So what we're tr and then we put this prove statement at the end right here. Okay. So let's go. Let's just go through this. So this is given. So we're going to go ahead and put given right there. Okay. Now this says draw segment DB. So that means we're going to draw this segment right there. Okay. So let's draw that. There it is right there. And the reason is through any two points, there's always a line. So we can draw a line through any two points for this reason. Through any two points, there's exactly one line. All right, so this one says uh, AB is parallel. So the top is parallel to the bottom. Uh, and then AD is this side, is parallel to BC, is this side. That's just definition of a parallelogram right there. Notice how uh, we marked them. So I marked with the arrows, so I'm telling my brain that these are parallels. Now, can you see parallel lines cut by a transversal? 
We can do alternate interior angles. Does that ring a bell? And then uh, these parallel lines cut by this transversal again, this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles. Okay, this, this angle right here and this angle are alternate interior angles between those parallel lines. So that's what this says right here, ADB. So here's A. D, B, that's this angle right here, congruent to C, B, D, so C, B, D, that's this angle right here, and then, um, and then it says A, B, uh, A, B, D, so A, B, D, which is this guy right here, is congruent to C, D, B, so this angle, okay, am I making sense? Let's go ahead and mark those right there, okay? All right, so now I can see I have congruent angles. Mark the figures. I can't emphasize that enough. I still get kids not marking the figures right there. Those are alternate interior angles. They're congruent because of parallel lines right there. Okay, all right, now we're going to go ahead and say this segment equals itself by the reflexive property right there. Notice how I marked it right there. Okay, so now it's marked. And if you don't mark it, you can't see it. But now I can see we have angle side angle. Can you see these two angles and the included side are congruent to these two angles and the included side? Angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the first triangle. So A, B, D. So I went from A to to B to D. So, so A is going to correspond with C, okay? So I went from A to the two angles mark. So I got to go from C to the two uh, angles. So C, D, B. That's what goes there, okay? All right, and then always after we have congruent triangles, then we can say everything else about these triangles are congruent by C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This is always the reason after we get congruent triangles. Once you get congruent triangles, you can almost count on CPCTC is the reason coming next, okay? All right, so this proof, you guys, is our next one, and this was a flow chart proof. So this is section D. We're going to complete the flow chart proof that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay, so here we go. There it is, and I, that was the other part of the homework for my students. They were to copy that down in their notes. Okay, and then we're going to go over this the next day, which will be tomorrow for my kids. Okay, so so um, proofs always begin with the given, and they always end with the proof part right here. Okay, so I'm going to put this right here and put this down here. Okay, always start off with the given and put the proof part down there. Okay, so... Now, uh, we're going to go right here, okay? So this says definition of a parallelogram. Okay, well, parallelograms gives us parallel sides. So we're going to say this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side right there, okay? Uh, I'm just doing the top and bottom for right now, okay? But we can also include this side parallel to this side. Okay, now this says opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So I can say either these sides are congruent or these sides are congruent right there. So I chose the top and bottom right there, okay? Now, let's see, over here it says, uh, okay, so definition of a parallelogram right here, we can go ahead and say um, um, that uh, um, this says alternate interior angles are congruent. So right here, this alternate A, B, A, uh, B, uh, E, that's this angle right here, is congruent to uh, C, D, E, because this and this angle are alternate interior angles with these parallel lines. And for the same reason, these angles are, are this set right here. They're alternate interior angles also because they're cut by this transversal with these parallel lines, so they are congruent right there. Okay, now check this out. This says angle side angle. Can you see angle side angle right there? angle side angle so I'm gonna say triangle ABE that's the top one so ABE I went from two arcs to one arc to E so two arcs to one arc to E so CDE okay by angle side angle and then I can say by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent I can conclude that this piece equals this piece. 
I can conclude that uh, this piece right here equals this piece, and that's our proof statement right there. So we just proved that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. All right, so here we go. Uh, a, B, D is a parallelogram. Find each measure. Okay, so number one says find A, D. So that's this piece right here. It, this says it's equal to 7X. Well, it's also equal to 5X plus 19 because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So we solve for X. We get X equals... Uh, 9.5 and then x is usually not an the answer and it's not in this case it said find the length of ad so we'll plug in uh, 9.5 next to that 7 and we'll be 7 times 9.5 and we get 66.5 on that okay now this one says find the measure of angle b so angle b has 6y plus 5 in there well opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent okay so i set 8y plus, uh, minus 17 equal to 6y plus 5 solve for y we get y equals 11. Y is not the answer. We've got to plug that back into 6y plus 5. So 6 times 11 plus 5. 66 plus 5 is 71. All right, now this says find angle C. Well, there's nothing there right there. But now that we know this is 71, consecutive angles are supplementary. So we go ahead and add them up to be 180, plug in the 71 and subtract, and we get 109 right there, okay? All right, here's another one. So here we got another parallelogram, P, Q, R, S. So find the measures. Okay, so this says find Q, R. So Q, R has this 3Z minus 4 next to it. It equals this side because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So go ahead and set them up and solve for z, and we get z equals 8. Is z the answer? No, it says find qr, so we've got to plug in 8 right there. 3 times 8 minus 4, and we get 20. Okay, this one says find pr. Okay, pr is this whole diagonal. Well, I know this piece equals this piece because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So we'll go ahead and set that up right there and then solve for X. And remember, X isn't the answer. In fact, if we plug in X either to this one or this one right here, if we plug in X, I like that one. I don't know if I did it in this video, but 5 plus 9 is 14. Okay, actually I plugged it. Yeah, I did. So 5 plus 9 is 14, but PR is going to be... Um, 2 times 14. So when we plug that in, we get 28 on that. All right, you guys, if you are in uh, my class, that's going to be your assignment. Take care.